Majima here and I just wanted to do uh, a quick video. I'm jumping on the K-pop tag um, train and it's going to be a wild ride, okay? Uh, no one tagged me in any video or whatever, but I saw uh, Whitney Bay's K-pop tag video, hysterical, and I was like, man, I need to do one because no one has ever heard my thoughts on K-pop unless they've been to KCON or follow me on Twitter, which you should totally, A, follow me on Twitter and all social media. My links are in the description below. And B, uh, let KCON know that I want to come back. So let's dive in, all right? You ready? Put your seatbelts on because you know Ajima be crazy. Okay, question one. How did you first discover K-pop? Uh, I want to say it was about 2011. I was in college and I was up really late doing an assignment last minute. Needed to take a brain break, so I ended up going on Hulu, and Hulu had been um, requesting, I guess is the word, or suggesting, that's it. They've been suggesting that I watch a show called Boys Over Flowers based on the other shows I'd been watching. And I would always like deny, 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 because it's like, Ugh, that sounds so stupid. You know, Boys Over Flowers, like what the hell is that? But that particular night, I was just so stressed about this project that was due that I just needed to take a break from everything, so I decided to watch it. I got halfway through the first episode and I stopped it for a little bit because it didn't seem, I don't know, it just seemed really weird. But I picked it up again and continued, and by the second episode, I was hooked. So I watched it and then started watching, um, let me see, Boys I Will Flowers first and then Sid City Hunter was the second one because I was trying to follow uh, the actors, the, you know, F, F4, whatever they were called. I was trying to follow their careers and I found out that uh, Kim Hyun Jin was uh, actually in a band. So I looked up Double S 501 and liked some of their music, but it, honestly it wasn't until I got to Iris and found out about Top and then Big Bang that I was like, okay, I'm hooked. So that is my brief yet crazy uh, K-pop fall into K-pop. I had actually heard of K-pop. I take that back. I didn't hear of K-pop before, um, but I had heard it without knowing what it was because I was a fan of Rain back in 2007. Um, there was this television channel called ASEAN Network that uh, showed a lot of the Asian uh, MVs, the music videos. So everything from like K-pop, J-pop, all well, all Asian countries that had a music video, it was out, and I saw Rain's uh, I'm Coming video, but I didn't know, I liked it, but I didn't know he was Korean or anything, I just liked the music, and then, you know, of course, Ninja Assassin came out, so I'll have to do, uh, a, like, a story time on that, because I didn't see Rain when I was living in Hawaii, but we'll have to save that for another time. Okay, number two, first ever bias. I guess that would have to be... Kim Han Jun of Double uh, S 501. Uh, since Boys Over Flowers was my first drama that I watched, he was like the the person I latched onto, and Ajima was like hooked on him for a good month or so. I even before I knew what. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So it wasn't fanfic, okay? But for some reason, I had like this dream date that I felt necessary to. Uh, right, I didn't publish it right away. I think I, I put it on my blog. It's stupid, but I'll um, put a link just so you can laugh at my ridiculousness back at then. I can't even say I was young because you know I was like 28 when this happened. But whatever. Um, yeah, my you know perfect date with an idol. And that was uh, who I chose. So I guess you could say he was my first bias. But. He's not my bias anymore. I think we all know who Ajima's bias is by now, so yeah. Third question. Uh, current favorite girl slash boy group and current favorite girl slash boy solo artist. So since I don't really listen to a lot of girl groups, I guess I would have to say it's Mamamoo. I saw them and uh, Kikai New York and they were fabulous. And I remember when they first came out, they had a song with Bumkey that I really, really liked. And so I've been kind of following their story, but uh, their story, their, their music history, career, whatever. But, um, yeah, I feel bad. I don't really, don't really know. And as far as boy groups, again, 
right now my tastes are changing i'm getting into more of like the solo artists and like the indie slash underrated artists so groups aren't so much my thing anymore but i i enjoy music i can't really say i have a favorite right now so i know that sounds crazy now solo artists um ailey for female she girl can sing okay she is a singer and um, boy solo artist zion t uh he's my everything dean is uh like they're battling for that number one spot right now for me they're both amazing and surprisingly they're both well is dean it hasn't made it official yet so i don't know but like they're both leaving their original companies and sliding over to yg you know there's that whole yg black hole like once artists get there you don't really hear from them anymore so i'm hoping that that will not be the case for zion t and dean if dean really is going to yg because i love their music so much i will be really hurt if they stop making things so yeah uh, Zion T and Dean, number one spot for me right now. Which other groups will always have a special place in your heart? Lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, Big Bang, first and foremost, because they um, opened the doors for me as far as getting into the K-pop world. What I mean by that is before I was really into uh, Big Bang and K-pop, you know, like I said, I mentioned Double S 501. I didn't know anybody who liked that group. I didn't know anybody that was in the fandom besides myself. So um, it was kind of a lonely experience. You know, I stuck to watching dramas and listening to like the OSTs. Uh, but yeah, it was really lonely to the point where I would like mope around my house because I wanted to share this experience with people and like my friends at the time weren't interested you know look I was a military mom okay so that was like I had just gotten out the military um, I was a, a wife of an active duty member and uh, I had kids you know and it's like so that group that I was around they weren't talking about k-pop you know it was like diaper changes and and deployments and all this other stuff and it was like well i want to talk about this and when i would bring it up i would get the like look you know i'm sure a lot of you have had that look when you try to bring up k-pop to your non-k-pop friends so there was a lot of that but once i got into big bang i joined a social media networking site called me today it's not in existence anymore but it was it was on and popping back then i mean this was I was on Twitter, but this was before Twitter was popping, really. So, like 2011, 2010, 2011, that's what it was. And Me Today brought me a lot of friends because I joined the Big Bang, like, fan thread. And I met a lot of friends that I'm still close to and, like, meet up with a lot today. So, yeah, I owe Big Bang a lot. That was my first concert. And, um, it was just a magical experience. So, I gotta give up you know, props to Big Bang. Regardless to whatever situation they're in now, what type of music they're, you know, doing now, I still have that special place for them in my heart. So, yes. Okay, next. Ideal type in K-pop. <sighs> Lord. <laughs> I don't really have an ideal type. You know, like, you gotta sing. Like, Daesung, he's my ultimate bias, as you may or may not know, but you should probably know that if you follow me. Um. The, the vocals, the, the range that he has. That is my ideal type. Um, he can go, like he sings trap music in like Japan. He does, you know, the stuff with Big Bang, his solo album, you know, ballads and everything. He's very well-rounded as far as music goes and I just, I love it. So I guess if I have to pick an ideal type, vocal-wise, um, then yeah, that's what I'd be. As far as, I don't know, body type? Like this is kind of a vague question. I don't really have one. As long as you, you know, you make me laugh, uh, which Daesung does as well, and can sing, yeah, we're good. Okay, K-pop song you never get tired of listening to. I wish that this tag was more of like Korean music because I don't have a K-pop song per se that, well, I guess right now it would be Monster, XO's Monster. I really do enjoy that one and um, I've got, even got my youngest son into that, like he's EXO obsessed. But I enjoy a lot of the uh, Korean R&B music right now. I have this thing that I do called K-pop After Dark. I do like a live stream where we listen to um, a lot of the indie artists or like underrated artists 
via SoundCloud and whatnot, wherever I can find them, and discuss like their R&B or hip hop um, songs. So with that, saying that one, I would say uh, like Zion T's Young La Bridge, but um, the live version with the piano. And then he did one with Pika Cast, which it sounds like it's an entire band. So it's not something that you hear on his album. It's a different version, but I like that one more. Never get tired of hearing that. Um, makes me cry a lot of times, especially if ajima has been drinking, but yeah. Okay, next. Um, K-pop song, you have to sing at Norebang or karaoke. Okay, fun fact with Ajima. I have never done Norebang. And uh, yeah, like I sing in my car. That's like my recording studio all the time. And I sing um, around the house and stuff. But as far as an official Nore Bang slash karaoke room, never done it. So maybe somebody could take me out and sing because I would love to do that. A uh, song that you learned the choreography for. Lord have mercy. Okay, I tried to learn Exo's Monster and I got I got the chorus part down, kind of, but that's hard work, man. Uh, props to all of the, the dancers, the coverists and whatnot, because holy crap, that is hard to do. But um, aside from that one, the only video that I have is uh, when I was going to Korean school, we had to do a song, JYP's Honey. Uh, so yeah, I called it K-pop fail because it was. It was terrible, I was horrible, but it's out there, so look for it i'll put a link somewhere if you really want to see me at my worst Oof. but yeah okay next question favorite k-pop music video uh i don't call it i don't think it's k-pop but k wills please don't that's straight off the top of my head uh that is my favorite video because of the message and the, the twist at the end um yeah that was that was really good uh as far as like dancing an EXO video, uh, Monster, I guess, because it's the newest one, but really, EXO's dance videos have been on point. Call Me Baby was on point, and I got obsessed with that one. Um, Overdose, obsessed with that one. So yeah, those are, are really good. Mm, cover by K-pop artist. So again, not a K-pop artist per se, but they are Korean singers, a group called Too Big. They used to do a lot of covers of like 60 Soul. Um, I can't remember which one did it, but uh, one of them did a cover of Stevie Wonders, Isn't She Lovely, and blew that jank out the park. I mean, for real, it was amazing. Next, K, a favorite K-pop idol, actor slash actress. I can't think of one. I want to say uh, Hyunjin, Park Hyunjin was, um, he is, he is. Mm. You know, here's the thing with the, with, when scandals, he's always, like, I feel like I like the, the artist. And then when a scandal happens, it's like, oh, I don't know now, you know. With him, he was a great artist. It was okay for me as a singer. He wasn't like a favorite by far. Very popular, I know, but you know, per personal preference, not so much singing, but as actor, yes, I enjoyed him. So I guess I would have to say him. As far as actress, I can't think of an actress who is also an idol. What's the chick from, was it A Pink from Reply 1997? I liked her, so I uh, can't think of her name because you know, out of my brain, but yeah, I do like her. Uh, let's see, there's a lot of questions, isn't it? Favorite dancer, <laughs> Jay Park, my man, um, yeah. I, I don't think I need to say much about that, right? Uh, favorite rapper? Mm, Verbal Gent. He is amazing. He can pretty much do it all. He's a, a, an amazing rapper. Good, solid singer. A musician in general. He's freaking amazing. And he's handsome. And if you ever listen to his lyrics from like his earlier work, mm, that boy he got a dirty mind, which you know I always enjoy. So. Yeah, okay, next. Uh, first K-pop purchase was uh, Big Bang's Alive album. And when I say purchase, I mean like physical copy. It's still floating around somewhere, I think. Uh, as a matter of fact, not only is that my first, that's my only. Um, everything before and after that was uh, from like iTunes because I just can't justify spending that amount of money on something that 
I won't really use because I don't have, I take the back, I have a CD player in my car, but I'd rather just plug in my, you know, my iPod. So yeah, most recent K-pop purchase. Well, from iTunes, I bought, what the heck did I buy? I don't know, let me see. Um, I bought some girl, oh, it was uh, Luna from FX. I bought it over the summer. She did her solo and it was really, it was really solid. So I saw it on Amber's Raging Monkey um, reality show and I was like, you know, this music is good. So I went and listened and bought like everything. So I guess that would be my most recent one. And Wonder Girls uh, Lonely, the reggae one. I like that one, so I bought that as well. Next would be favorite K-pop fashionista. Mm, I don't have style. I'm just put that out there. I wear what's comfortable because that's just who I am. But um, someone who I like watching, I guess dress, that sounds weird, would be Drew Dragon. I like his style, you know, I really do. I like Top style as well, but Top is more, I mean, he's like an Odyssey style. It's very, very classic, okay? GD is very um, edgy, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So I like to look at that. As far as females, because I don't wear those types of clothes, I don't look for them as like, um, I guess, icon. So, yeah. Mm. Next, if you can interview any K-pop star about their skincare routine, who would it be? Dada from uh, 21. 21. Um, I would ask her because she's actually my age. She's in her 30s and she looks way younger than I believe I ever will look. So I would definitely ask her what the hell she's doing and where can I sign up to get it because yeah. Finally, current favorite K-pop songs. Uh, okay, I don't have a, ooh, current favorite. Something I'm listening to now would be Naya's All Right, which I'll put a link in the description somewhere. And uh, something more mainstream. I can't think of any mainstream K-pop song. There's been a lot of comebacks that um, I know is happening currently. And honestly, I haven't been listening to any of them. Um, Vix, I guess, if, you know, I did buy their, oh, I did buy their album. I bought Vix's album, uh, digital album, because I love Vix and I love Dark Concepts. But aside from them, and like I said, the Naya's all right. I don't, um, I don't know, it's weird. I told you, I'm, my tastes are changing. So it's slowly like, I gotta find, I guess my my way through this. <laughs> so that is it for this video. I hope you liked my ranting and learned something new about Ajima. If you do a K-pop tag, um, let me know, okay? On social media or something, I'll be sure to check that out. And yeah, uh, having said that, please thumbs up the video, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time, okay? Bye.